If you had asked me 18 years ago if I ever would have done any kind of martial arts, my answer would have been no. I know myself so much better now. I had to work on myself. And that's not to say that I'm not done. This, you know what the benefit of this art is? There's never, you never stop working on yourself. My name is Julianne Roseman. I've been training at the Village for 17 years. When I started training at the Village, I had no concept of what Kung Fu was. I kind of did it because I was around a lot of strong women. When I exercised, that's how I first came into contact with Sifu Gaspé. One thing led to another, and these women were amazing. They had great energy. They were so friendly. Um, and they started saying to me, you should try this art. We think you'd make a good village fighter. Um, you should come join us. And that's really how I started Kung Fu. So I like to say that I didn't search out Kung Fu. Kung Fu found me. So when I started the, the Art of Village Fighting, um, again, I had no idea what Kung Fu was. And so it was overwhelming. And I'd come to class, and I would go through the motions, and I had these women that I looked up to. And I would, every day, I'd leave and think, I don't even, I don't, really understand what I'm doing. This is uh, taking me outside of my comfort zone. And, and mind you, I'm a beginner, so there was nothing really that difficult that we were doing, but it was just so foreign to me. And I really wasn't, I wasn't comfortable in my skin, if you will. Um, and it started to bring up uh, stress in me. I, for many years prior, um, had struggled uh, with depression in my life, it's in my genetic code, and the, the environment of taking me outside of my box, doing something that I wasn't comfortable with, that didn't come naturally, that's a good way to put it, that I wasn't just good at, um, brought up uh, stress in me and actually kind of made me feel that, that depression start to come in, and it scared me a little bit, and it overwhelmed me, and I felt the best way at that time to deal with it was to um, take a break. That I remember telling Sifu I was going to take a break because I was just, I don't know how to describe it, but I was, it wasn't, it was taking me so much out of my comfort zone that it, I felt the only way to deal with that was to not put myself in that situation. So I took a break. And in that time, I continued to go and see the women and in the exercise class, and they were, again, continued to be kind to me. I was a little worried that they would look at me different. And I, um, I, I had three young daughters, and I caught, started to look inside to myself and say, why did you run when it got hard? Why was that your answer? And is that acceptable? Is that a good uh, role model? for your girls who are also training in this art, although in our program, our kids program and our adult program, completely different. We are not equals in any sense, but still, they're challenging themselves, and here I was challenged, and my answer was to stop or quit, although I don't think I used those words. I said, I'm gonna take a break. Anyhow, in the, I think I was out for about two, three months, potentially, um, trying just to get myself back and understand understand what was going on in myself and what made me run and and if that was acceptable and I, re I came to the realization that the answer wasn't to run the answer was to get back in there and face those fears face those feelings of inadequacy face the fact that I had to challenge everything I knew about my body um, that was the only way to to grow so I came back to not allow myself to run from what made me uncomfortable. I had to put in the time, put in the work, and I tell other people, it's okay if you feel awkward. It's okay if you feel unsure. That is the art working. It's about challenging yourself, taking yourself outside your comfort zone, and, and working on what you need to, as an individual, the things that are inside that plague us, working on those things. And, and this art has, has everything involved in what we do here, forces you to look at yourself. One of the main things I remember thinking is, wow, I'm really, really almost looking at myself through a magnifying glass and really taking out little aspects of my behavior and, and uh, studying them and, and, and then changing what I didn't like 
or improving on what I thought was good. And I really, I do that to this day. Every day I'm working on the skills that the art of village fighting has given me. Every day I work on those things to become a better Julian. Because the, one of the things I love about our art is that it's a complete system and that everything makes sense. There's nothing you don't, nothing we learn here that doesn't benefit us in some way. Emotion versus action. Everything has to have a purpose, action. We're not just moving. And that's why we, you know, that fence is shaking all the time. And not, it's about everyone being the best they can be, not about uh, being the best in the school. Everyone improving themselves. We're all trying to be the best we can be at the art. And it, you'll never feel like you're there. You're always having to push more and more because this art is so huge. And there's always things I can improve on. And I go back to the beginning and I see my basics and still find things I need to improve on. To be honest, the biggest change and the thing that I myself find uh, the most challenging and the most intimidating is the fighting. We have to go inside uh, and then connect into all those things we've practiced for all those years, all those uh, skills that we've been learning and then be able to pull them out seamlessly without a lot of thought because when we think too much usually it doesn't go well so we have to be able to pull them out under pressure under a pressure environment pressure even that some all these people are watching you for me i don't like being the center of attention if you've practiced enough if you've put in the time if you've put in uh the the work over and over and over what is ingrained in you and we all have our if you talk to all the other uh village seafoods the amazing ladies ahead of me. All of us have those moves that are just our go-tos and we've practiced them over and over and over and those come out without even thought. As simple as if I raise my arm, I don't have to think about the muscles I'm using, those moves present themselves. But that only comes up over years of practice and years of understanding what what are the, what are what you, each step I have to take to, to make that action work and, Alba and round robin good thing to bring up because something that i never enjoyed and then i learned that it's just part of something that i have to put myself through to to improve on myself i'm very hard on myself so i'm always expecting them me to be better i look at myself on video and i'm like oh my gosh that's what i looked like i felt like i did it this way so but in, in a relaxed environment uh now i've learned to just just relax myself and, and see the moves and find the flow and, and let it all just happen. Not, and that's ultimately what, uh, what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to just be able to let it flow because if we've practiced enough, it just comes out. The other thing that's so amazing about what we do is we're allowed to fail. And in, in this, our world more than ever now, you see it especially with um, social media when people fail everyone loves to jump on them because they made a mistake or they messed up that is how we learn that is how we grow and Sifu would always say fail don't worry about doing the perfect move and you'll right away know if it was right or it's wrong and then you take that and you say okay next time I have to do it this way or okay that was pretty good next time I'm gonna increase this part of it so by failing, we're learning. Um, and I, every time he'd, even though I still didn't want to fail, no one wants to fail, but every time he'd say that, I would say to myself, it's okay, okay, Julie, you, you're learning and you're gonna make mistakes and make those mistakes because the only way you get better is to make the mistakes. And then I remind other students, I, 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 everything I've learned about myself, that's what I give back to other people. Um, we've all beat ourselves up, we've all uh, struggled, and that's, and we struggle together. We, we go to each other and ask for support. We go to each other and ask for help. We work as a team. We're not about being one person being the best. We're about all of us lifting each other up. We all want to be good at what we do and we all support each other. So uh, for the last four years, I, uh, I'm a Pilates instructor. I became a certified Pilates instructor about four years ago. The root of Pilates, where it came from, Joseph Pilates, how he developed it. I learned that Joseph Pilates studied Kung Fu. Um, 
Qigong specifically. For the outsider, Kung Fu looks very easy. It looks very, oh, it's like dance. It's so flowy and soft. And they don't know how wrong they are. <laughs> um, when you watch it, it looks very simple. When our art brings up a lot of emotion. Or we can't be emotional. And we're, by nature, women are emotional. But in what we do as in our village fighting, which is our combat training, we can't have emotion because when you're emotional, and most people, if you think back, when you're really emotional, you're not thinking clearly. So we need to be able to calm ourselves, calm, calm that inner emotion, but still have that aggressive uh, intent, which is challenging. So we have to have control in that aggressive, aggressive intent, and that's all about learning how to control me. If I can't control myself, I certainly can't control another human being. Again, this art is mind, body. It, it's a full, it's a complete, complete connection, which is one of the things I love about the art. And I, if this art were only village fighting, I don't think it would be the art for me. I need all the pieces. You can never leave one piece or it won't work. Although it's natural movement, it doesn't feel natural when you're first learning it. But once I've done it over and over, and I really understand it, that's why there's such a connection to the mind. You have to really understand, and I'm a visual learner, so Sifu was always so good at understanding how we learn best, and he could, he would show you or do it on you. That's a, another good way to learn, is have the move done on you, and you feel what's happening to your body. You're always working on, on yourself. But that's what this art forces you to do. And you're learning a skill at the same time um, that's, and different than a, it's different than a sport because this skill that I'm learning will, will be there for me have, if I ever need to use it in the outside world. I was lucky enough to get to travel to China, the birthplace of Kung Fu, twice. I went in 2006 and then again 11 years later in 2017. For me, China was another time of taking me outside my comfort zone. I had never traveled outside of United States. I had barely traveled at all by the time I went to China. Um, but I really wanted to see where our art came from and, and, and soak up the history of, uh, of the birthplace of Kung Fu. And then when I went the second time, I had so much more knowledge. Kung Fu, there's a whole culture of Kung Fu in China. So, I, and we, obviously when we went there, that's where we went to see. We went to see the culture of of the art and where its birthplace is and how it's evolved over the years. And you see these huge schools of students learning the art that, that I'm learning here, although what we do is slightly different, but it just is, you're in awe of the history. I didn't want to be better than Sifu Sandra. I just wanted to be on her level. I don't, that's all been read, so that's not videoing, right? 